You are listening to episode 43 of the Peaceful Mind Podcast. Welcome to the Peaceful Mind Podcast, a place for creating the peace of mind you need to be the best mom you are created by God to be. If you want to bring more balance, more joy, and more peace to your motherhood, this is the place for you. I'm your host, certified life coach and Catholic mom, Danielle Tienel. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let's get started. Today's episode is going to be a special one. We are 40 plus episodes into the Peaceful Mind podcast, and I think it's a perfect time right now to pause and over the next few weeks, I am going to bring you a series that will, once you learn and listen and put together these five components, you will then have the kind of center um, and really the number one coaching tool I use to first and foremost, self-coach myself And then second to any client that I have the honor and privilege of serving. This tool has, I've brought it up before, one of the earlier episodes, um, I think it was called Two Great Models. And I remember I touched on that, but throughout all of the other episodes of the Peaceful Mind podcast, you have heard me talk about the concepts that together make up Um, the model. And the model is the name um, of the tool that was created by Brooke Castillo, who is the founder of the Life Coach School. And the Life Coach School is where I got my Life Coach certification from. This is the main tool that we were taught and that now I use. And I want to introduce it to you all today. Because you've already heard bits and pieces that make up the five sections of the model. You've heard me talk a lot about circumstances, about thoughts, feelings, your actions, and the results that you have in your life. And over, if you've listened to several of our episodes, you'll know that I have sprinkled that in. And now I'm going to get even more super clear on it so that you can kind of really start to put the, all the episodes and the concepts that I've been talking about together. And the reason why it's so important is because this model gives us awareness of what's creating our current results in our life. And we also use it to help us create new results right? That's what we want. We want to get awareness about what we ourselves are creating for ourselves. I know that sounded a little redundant, but just stay with me here. You know, everything that you think that you feel and that you do or create, it can be put into this model as well as anything that happens in your life. You could say that we are all living daily in a series of models. It's just, it beautifully simplifies and clarifies for us just everything that makes up your life. And so the goal of this podcast and the series of podcasts that will follow in the next couple of weeks is to teach you what the model is and how to use it to solve any struggle you're having in your life. The model itself, it gives us somewhere to take all of our thoughts that we have, all of the results that we like don't love that are going on in our life right now, and it allows us to figure out why we have them. And it gives us a vision of what to, where we would want to concentrate and change and, you know, tells us what we might do next in our life. The type of life coaching that I do is called causal coaching, and it isn't about treating the symptoms of your pain or shortcomings. It's about finding the root cause of each of your symptoms. And 
understand it. And the model helps you do that. It helps you change to make room for new successes and fulfillment in your life. The model gives us clarity. It makes room. And it's just, it's a daily tool that you can use to implement all the things that you want to get a little bit more clear on or change. Because every issue we encounter in our lives, it can be broken down into five interrelated components. With changes in one component, you then affect all the others. So today's episode is going to talk about one component. And then in the following weeks, I'll talk about the other four. And then together, they make up this self-coaching model. I'm just so excited for you all to know it and hear it and to apply it in your lives. Because no matter what issue you are struggling with or being challenged by, you can pinpoint the troubling cause and begin to coach yourself, to move towards that more peaceful mind about it when you use the model. Now, I want to go ahead and dive right into the first component component of the model, which is circumstances. And just know that in the next week, we'll be talking um, about, in the next few weeks, we'll be talking about the rest of the components of the model. And just stick with me a little patient, I just think it's important to take them one at a time. And just from this episode, I think you're going to think about each of these components differently. And I want you to start going to look for them in your life. And then at the end of, gosh, I guess five episodes, you'll be able to have a really robust look at each of the components. So let's just dive in right now. And let me explain what what I mean by circumstances, the first component of the model. So circumstances are all the things that are outside of our control. These include other people, our past, and the weather. Sometimes we forget that we can't control these things. So we try and expend all of our energy trying to control other people or change our past. I remember the year I was engaged. I was engaged for 13 months before my wedding. And I remember having like just every Saturday thinking about the bride that weekend and if it was good weather or bad weather and if the bride was going to be happy or sad. Like if it was a Saturday and it was raining, I'd be like, oh, you know, and I remember kind of thinking, you know, that maybe my world would end if I had a total rainy day on um, on my wedding day. It's like, I re- if I just think back to how much angst I had thinking that I had any control whatsoever at what the weather would be that day. So that's just an example, right? And as frustrating as it can be to not be able to control other people, we want our kids to totally keep their room tidy. And somehow we tell them to and then they don't, you know, and it's frustrating, but there, it is good news. It is good news that we can't control them because while we can't control our circumstances, we can control everything else, including, and this is the most important part, including what we decide to think and how we feel and how we behave. So circumstances They can be proven in a court of law and they are facts. They're facts that everyone would agree upon at any moment. Kind of like think about everybody in the world. Would they agree that your child is misbehaving? No, you would have some people that would think, oh, no, your child is great. And other people would be like, yes, you need to really do something and take care of that. So be, see how there's no agreement? So then we know that it wouldn't be able to be proven in the court of law. It wouldn't be something that the whole world would agree to. So it's not a fact. So then therefore it wouldn't be a circumstance. And so as you would tell me what you are struggling with in your life, I 
would have to pick out from all that you tell me what's actually a true fact, what actually something that happened, that took place, that even a judge would say happened, and you would have everyone agree. Otherwise, I would say it's not a circumstance. And sometimes you'll just think that you're just telling me or, or just relaying the facts when you're talking with your friends or your mother. But in reality, those are just your thoughts instead. And we'll talk a lot more about thoughts in the next episode. So here's an example. Perhaps you're struggling in your motherhood and you tell me that, well, you just don't have time. You just don't have time for the things that you want to do because you have to take care of your kids. And this feels like a fact to you. It feels like a circumstance to you. But actually, it's your thought about your circumstance. You would tell me or I would ask you, okay, like, so you have a child. That's a fact. And then you have, so that makes you like the fact that you are a mother, right? And then I would say you have how many hours in the day? And that would also be like your fact. But to tell me that you never have time for the things you want to do, that isn't a circumstance. That would be your thought about time, your thought about having children within that time. And We all really do have the same amount of time, right? And we can do with it what we choose. And there never really will be more time or less time. And when you kind of see that, you then know that you get a choice here. You get a choice to think about that circumstance, the circumstance of having 24 hours and this amount of children and the list of things that you want to do, right? We could get really clear on what that list is and those lists, the list could become you know, the circumstance. And it's just really empowering when we decipher in our lives what the difference is and what the true definition of a circumstance is and what is all the thoughts and the story that we're telling ourselves about it. And we just want to separate those two. If you take away nothing more than this from the today's podcast episode, I want you to pay attention to this. One of the most important things you'll ever realize is that facts don't hurt. The circumstances of your life have no effect on you until you encounter your mind to it. And there is where you attach a meaning to a circumstance that happens. So you aren't sad about someone dying until your mind registers the fact. And the person's death, which may have happened days ago, had no effect on you at all. At the moment they died, you could be off somewhere laughing because your mind isn't aware of what just happened. So it was only when you heard someone say the words that so-and-so had died You then were presented with that circumstance and you then had a thought about it. Maybe the thought was like, oh my goodness, that's so sad, which then made you feel sad. And again, we'll get more on on those thoughts and feelings in next week's episode. So we want to separate out the facts from our thoughts because it's Inaccurate to say, I was devastated when they died, but it's more accurate to say, I was devastated by what I thought about their death. And does this, does this even matter? Like those little particulars? And my answer to you is yes, because when you realize that your mind causes your feelings, you can be much more in control of your emotional life. And it it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you choose to be sad when someone dies. We most likely will, or it's, it's not that you won't choose. That's what I meant to say. 
that you won't be sad when someone dies, but because you most likely will, but it does mean that you can decide not to be mad when something much less significant happens in your life. You control your emotional life with your thinking. And the best way to do that is to have the skill of separating out what is truly a circumstance, a fact of your life from a thought. Another example of this is for me to point out when I have a mom that comes to me and is telling me um, perhaps they're working outside the home and they're saying that right now at work, like work is just totally stressing me out. And what I would offer to them is just to point out that it's actually their thought about their work that stresses them out. Because we could look at their actual job or their actual boss or maybe something their boss said as a circumstance of life. But when you believe and choose to think that work stresses you out, what you're doing is you're assigning that meaning with a thought about your work. And although you might not be able to change your job at that very moment, you most certainly can change the way you think about work. And then that will change everything. This is where I get a little passionate because we create our lives mostly with our minds. And we often believe our stories so deeply that we think that they're facts, but they're not. And you know, sometimes this is totally fine. So long as the story that we're telling ourselves isn't painful or causing problems in our lives. But for many of you, your own stories are painful and even debilitating, like keeping you stuck and not moving forward and feeling unworthy and ruminating in doubt. And this is where we want to separate the circumstances in your life from those stories and thoughts that you've been telling yourself. So this is why it's so important to now just kind of, I hope what this does is have you looking at things that are going on in your life and happening to your life in a different way and asking yourself, is this a fact? And the way you know that is like, is it provable? Would every person agree on the fact, and it's got to include no judgment and no opinion. And that's, that's how we would know. Picture everybody in the world standing and would they agree with this fact? Or like I mentioned before, in a court of law, would a judge say, you know, put his gavel down and say, yes, this is true. And when we realize that something is indeed just a circumstance, we then know that we can have a neutral way of looking at that circumstance because, well, circumstances are neutral. It's just data, information. It's just a data point that we get to notice that's happened in our lives. Here's some examples. The sky is blue. There is carpet on this floor. I have a son. She said, quote, I don't have time. I weigh 165 pounds. I have a boss. So these are just some examples of circumstances. They just are facts in the world. And then you get to think about them any way you want. So here's a little list. And as I read through, I want you to ask yourself, is this a fact, a circumstance, or is this a thought? that is separate from the circumstance, or it's a thought about a circumstance, okay? So as I read it, just kind of go ahead and like from what you've learned in this episode, attach whether it is or not, okay? So the first one, I am 50 years old. Is that a circumstance? My son is failing math. She is rude. I am too busy. My kids are mad at me. I am in debt. I'm underpaid for the work I do. So there was the list. What do you think? 
were any of them circumstances? Were they able, were you able to recognize them as just thoughts? So let's go back and look at some. So I am 50 years old. Okay. Now I personally, Danielle, am not 50 years old. I was just using this as, as you know, to show you, but yes, that is a circumstance. If that person, right, can be proven through birth certificate and the way that we talk about the yearly calendar and what day he came, he or she came into the world, you could prove that they were 50 years old. So that is a fact. And then how about my example of she is rude? Would everyone in the world agree if you encountered someone who exhibited some, you know, action and you believe that what it was that she did, you had the thought she is rude? Well, I just kind of gave it away there. Yeah, the person could be a circumstance. And when we're talking about the model and talking about the first line we call of the model, we call it the C line, the circumstance line, we could put that, that woman or that girl or, you know, her name or just, you know, as a circumstance, like she, we know that she exists, but the thought she is rude is just that it's a thought about the circumstance. Um, I love this one. My kids are mad at me. Again, that's a thought. It's not a circumstance. Now you could put your kids in the circumstance line of the model. You could put what they said to you. Like maybe they said, I wish I wasn't your child. Um, or I hate you, mom. Like you could put that they said those words which was a fact, a circumstance that took place. We could put that in the C line of the model, but we couldn't put my child is mad at me as the circumstance. That's just the thought you have about your child. Okay, so I'm hoping that those last examples uh, were helpful Um, Because I know that the beginning of the episode, I was just trying to be able to differentiate in your mind between um, actual facts and circumstances that take place in the world and from, you know, differentiating them from the story and your thoughts about them. And next week, we're going to dive deeper about thoughts, the next line in the model. Um, But I'm going to just take it. I wanted to take it one by one. This next coming week before you hear the next episode, I just want you to have this kind of new awareness about what's going on in your life, in your world, in relation to yourself and your family and the summer and school out or, um, you know, your job or the state of your house or a relationship that you're thinking or that you're in right now. And I just want you to kind of be taking your mind and asking yourself, is this a circumstance? Is this a fact? Is this something happening that I could prove uh, in the court of law or anyone would agree with? Is this truly a fact? Or do you find yourself saying, finding that it isn't a circumstance, that perhaps it's, well, we know that if it isn't a circumstance, it's going to be one of the other things that we talk about in the model. It's either going to be a thought, a feeling, an action, or a result that you've created. So just kind of be on the on the lookout this week. And we really want to get familiar with what are the facts of your life. And then from there, in another episode, we're going to build on that. And in the end, I promise you, it will all come together in a beautiful coaching tool that when you get good at using yourself, um, or I would like to invite you to go ahead and have us dive deeper by joining me on a call. And we will take a look at this and what the exact circumstances are with your own life. Um, But for now, talking about the model, Today was about the circumstance and next week we'll get the next level and I promise you it'll all come together 
uh, in a beautiful way. And with that, I just want to wish you a beautiful week. And until then, I wish you much peace and love. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Peaceful Mind Podcast. Are you ready to take everything I teach you here and put it to work for your own life? To really learn how to have peace of mind no matter what is happening around you? If so, I'd love to have you as a client. As your coach, this is where you'll get personal and focused time on your own mind using life coaching tools, concepts, and proven life transforming wisdom, all through a faith filled lens. To learn more about how we can work together, come on over to DanielleTienel.com. There, you'll see how to sign up for a free coaching consult and learn how to get started. Until next time, peace be with you always.